JMC 6000 here, and before me I have this beautiful Jeep Wagoneer. Yes, this thing is an absolute animal. I think it's the biggest vehicle I've ever reviewed, ever had on this channel. And this isn't even the Wagoneer L. This is not even the Grand Wagoneer. This is just a regular 2024 Jeep Wagoneer. And uh, let's go ahead and show you right around this vehicle. So up front, as you can see, this thing is like bold, proud, in charge. It makes you feel like you're a king of the road when you're driving this thing. I'm going to tell you that right now. But very big, bold exterior. Definitely spells out it's a Jeep. You got the seven slotted grille. You got high beams. I'm sorry. You got LED low beams and high beams. You also have LED turn signals. And you get some LED fog lights right down here. Pretty nice. Um, has a camera up there to kind of watch the road. And this would be a radar sensor, but it is actually not on this model. I'll get into that a little bit more. I want you to come along the side here. Again, this thing is, this is not even the L version. Just take it all in. It's huge. Anyway, 275, 65, R18, Bridgestone, dueler tires, massive tires. You can get 20s, I believe. You can get 22s on this thing. These are the standard 18 inch because this is the standard Wagoneer. This is not even the Wagoneer L. Again, this I believe is what they call the Series 1. Anyway, this is kind of the side of it right here. Let's go around back. Not even the L version, not even the Grand version. You do get standard backup camera. I'm so sorry for the wind. Um, and you get LED taillights, LED turn signals. They're all red. And you also get an LED high mount brake light, which is right in here inside the glass. Okay, awesome. So this kind of the back end, you can't tow with this thing. And you have no visible exhaust tip. You just got this big exhaust right down there. The backup lights are actually right here and they're LED as well. So let's go ahead and look into the back. Power lift gate, of course. All right. You do have your floor mats in here. You got a little bit of storage, not a lot. Jack is right there. Stand back. All right, you do get a subwoofer. I believe you get a subwoofer back here with the standard radio. And then these seats, um, these are a manual tilt and, and fold. Um, they believe, oh, right here. They come. <laughs> right there. And then you can do the other side. This is a uh, eight passenger vehicle, so you can hold up to eight people in this behemoth. To close this, you got the button right here. It takes a while. Wow, that took like an hour. No, only kidding. All right, you got regular fuel right there. And then let's look with the window sticker before we look underneath the hood. This particular base Wagoneer price starts at 65 grand, at 66 rather. And this color is bright, white, clear coat. It's actually a pearl. No, I'm sorry, it's not a pearl. It's just a regular kind of a white, kind of a basic color. Um, you do get black leather interior and you do get the famous twin turbo hurricane in line six pretty awesome all right um you can see some other stuff here this vehicle has no options but a two thousand dollar destination charge for a grand total of 67 945 68 grand for this base wagoneer and again it competes with vehicles like the lincoln navigator the chevy tahoe the ford expedition um it competes with those big massive vehicles there let's go ahead and before i show you underneath the hood let's go ahead and hop in here this is the second row again plenty of room i have air vents back here i have my own climate control back here um we get power outlet 150 watt 12 volt and we get a pair of usb c's and a usb type a um, this, oh, let's check that out. I can recline, I can kind of adjust this, and I can go like this. Oh, there's a lot of adjustment here, a lot of leg room, plenty of leg room, plenty of space. Here's a cool thing that before I go into the way back, here's a cool thing that the middle row does, has this little strap, and I can do just like that. And I can actually climb in the way back, even though this doesn't have captain shares. You know, this kind of can act like Captain Sheridan, which is pretty cool. The Ford Explorer some, does something similar in its middle row if you have the bench seat in the center. All right, now I'm going to put that back up. I'm going to get myself in the third row. As we put that back, this can adjust as well. 
there's a button up top here we press and that just folds out of the way and it's for some reason it keeps digging at me all right so 215 pound guy back here in the second row oh it's on all the way back put all the way back there we go it's all the way back i got plenty of room back here plenty of room i can even sit in the middle again i'm 510 i got plenty of room back here i can sit over here you can actually fit probably three adults and there is a way to recline this third row as well you got armrest back here that's hard plastic but that's where you got air vents you got usb-c and usb-a on either side and some little baby it's not working but little baby little map lights you have back here this doesn't have the panos on roof just a regular flat cloth roof all right i would love to get out of here but this is actually not a bad space for being a third row but it is a behemoth of an suv oh there we go all right let me shuffle myself out of here let's put the seat back all right now let's go ahead and look underneath the hood and look at the twin turbo hurricane inline six okay this does come with the eight speed zf automatic transmission and there it is the twin turbo inline six now this inline six i'm going to do a separate video review on on the jmc garage talk so make sure you subscribe to the channel you'll be able to see that coming up this saturday afternoon we're going to do that separate video of the twin turbo inline six but suffice it to say this thing is buttery smooth it has 420 horsepower 486 pound feet of torque um it's right in line with um ford's twin turbo v6 the three and a half liter this is only a three liter um one the downside of this engine is that it gets horrible fuel economy horrible fuel economy sorry i had to emphasize that because it doesn't get very good and people may be like well chrysler you know dropped the hemi because they wanted to get get a six cylinder that got better fuel economy uh, this isn't no no it, it means because this thing weighs almost six thousand pounds almost six thousand i believe the weight of this one is like 5800 and some change but uh it does not get very good fuel economy so anyway let's go ahead and go in the interior and do an interior review and i'll like you my pros and cons likes and dislikes we'll go forward with that also we're in the interior of the 2024 jeep wagoneer and uh, again this is the base model this is kind of like the entry level wagoneer um and uh, nothing really you know no kind of options on it i think they call this the series one i'm not exactly sure the naming are uh no uh, i forget the name of the call anyway the, the naming scheme that Jeep has going on for the Wagoneer is absolutely confusing. So you have Wagoneer, then you have Grand Wagoneer, which you would think Grand Wagoneer would be the bigger version, but no, that's reserved for the L version. And then you have Series 1, 2, and 3, It and then you have some other, it's just utterly confusing. I don't understand why Jeep did what they did, but hey. And what Jeep is trying to do with this is you don't see Jeep anywhere on this. All you see is Wagoneer on the steering wheel. You see Wagoneer up front. I think it says Wagoneer on the back. You don't see really Jeep anywhere. In fact, I believe the key, which is in my pocket, actually says Wagoneer on it. It does. Look at that. It doesn't even say Jeep on it. It says Wagoneer. So what Jeep is trying to do is kind of make the Wagoneer its kind of own brand within the jeep identity almost like what gmc did with hummer or with the new hummer now they're making hummer kind of its own brand within the gmc identity but anyway this is uh the wagon here i'm gonna put that all the way down oh i can go down low there we go get some maybe get a little bit of ac going on okay couple things that i want to make mention of this interior again we know the price 68 grand with the destination this interior is nice i mean it's it's every bit of feels as worth as what it as what the window sticker says as far as way this interior feels that's one of the pros about this thing so let's go to my likes and dislikes uh, number one thing that i like has to be just the comfortability of it i mean yes this thing is huge but it doesn't feel as huge on the inside as it looks on the outside 
uh, this this massive center console and everything else nice and lined with felt pretty nice uh, you're sitting in these leather seats you're not ventilated but they are heated actually no wait they are ventilated and I can choose my zone for ventilation hey that's pretty cool they are ventilated seats all right well there, there's a couple things that Jeep does kind of weird, but there are some things that Jeep did right. Ventilated seats in here, um, nice padded and, and stitched leather on the armrest, on the door panel. Um, there's not a lot of shiny black pass except for right in this area. Nice hidden compartment that's lined with felt. The glove box is nice, lined with felt. Um, you got stitching on the dash. This is kind of like... I mean, this is genuine stitching, but this isn't a leather dash or anything. It's kind of like a, a, a one-piece molded, molded uh, plastic or molded foam. Uh, what we got going on the dash. The steering wheel feels great in hand. Um, it's a twin-spoke steering wheel. It's not a three-spoke, twin-spoke, but the stitching is nice. It, it feels great. You got the typical uh, Chrysler controls for, to do the radio and everything on the back side of it. Um, you have a limit gear limit selector right here. Um, and you don't really have a low, you have park neutral, reverse, or park reverse neutral and drive, and that's it. But you do have different modes. You have a snow mode, you have a sand mode, you have auto, and then you also have a sport mode. And then you have some different, you can close that up. We have auto start stop, off and on. We have traction control, hazards. Uh, we have parking, and then you can turn the tow haul off and on. So a couple things to remark, again, Number one thing I like is just the comfort, comfort out, comfortability of this Jeep and this interior. Um, the seats are a little flat. Well, that's okay. We'll we'll continue. I can't go my dislikes yet. But number two thing that I like about this is just how everything is integrated. We have a fully digital gauge cluster. We have this beautiful uh, big. Uh, well, I wouldn't call it a massive screen. There's a lot of black space, but I believe this is like a 10 inch screen. It, and everything's beautifully laid out. You have your up and down for temperature, your max defrost. Uh, you have rear. You can choose whether you want, you know, where you want your comfort or as far as your air speed to come out at. Uh, different fan speeds, auto, AC. Um, man, this uh, heated or ventilated seat really works nice. Uh, and then uh, recirculate right there. And then they have their own on the passenger side there. So nice. You get the volume knob. You get a tuning knob. They feel okay. I I was coming for a little bit better. Anyway, so that's our number three like. It's just how everything kind of, it feels well put together. It feels well put The Initial impressions in this thing are pretty, pretty strong. And then final like that I have with this Jeep Wagoneer has to be the powertrain. That's a plus and minus, which we'll get to. But the powertrain, the inline six is buttery smooth. Uh, the eight speed, you don't even know it's there. I mean, it shifts so seamless and so so smoothly that you can't even tell unless you actually look at the gear selector and up here on the dash actually let you know what gear you're in. So you actually, I mean, it's it's very, very nice. Now, let's go to my dislikes. Uh, again, three likes, three dislikes. Here we go. Number one, I'm not a big fan of the outside the way it looks. I think it's too school bus looking. If this was yellow... People would mistake this for a school bus. My son mistaken it for a school bus if it was yellow. I'm just saying it's very, how should I put it, upright, very vertical. Uh, there's not a lot of style to it. I mean, yes, it's massive. Yes, it's girthy. But I don't know. I think they could have done a little bit better style-wise. I mean, I have to think one of, one of my biggest likes of the three SUV market, I have to admit, I do love the new Cadillac Escalade. I think it looks great. Um, especially if you get in that stealth package. Same thing with the Ford Expedition. I think that looks great, especially in the stealth package. This, I feel like it's just big on the outside just to be big. And there's not a lot of, not a lot of connectivity with everything else with it. Anyway, that's just me. Number two dislike. As much as I love this powertrain, it sucks in fuel. It really does. So right now, I was averaging, even on the back roads where I go at the max speed of 60 miles an hour in some cases, I can only ma ma manage to average about 18 overall. 18. This thing's supposed to get 24 on the highway, right? Yeah, no, 23 on the highway. 19 around town. So it's barely hitting the, uh, the, the combined estimate 
for fuel economy. Barely hitting that. And I know this thing is a big, heavy SUV, but still, I would think for a twin turbo three liter inline six, it would get better fuel economy. Okay, so final dislike that I have, it's an expensive machine, I get that. It feels like it in many aspects, but there are some things that it's lacking and missing for the price. I don't have adaptive cruise here. For 68 grand, why do I not have adaptive cruise? Jeep, come on, give us adaptive cruise standard. I mean, you have companies like Toyota and, and other companies that even on their entry level vehicles, they get adaptive cruise standard. For 68 grand, I do not have adaptive cruise. I don't have lane centering. What in the world is going on? I got, I mean, I got forward collision warning and all that, and I get that, and I got blind spot monitoring, but that's it. I, I don't have any adaptive cruise, don't have any lean centering. For the amount of money you pay, you ought to have those things come standard. I have cold seats, but not adaptive cruise. Come on, Jeep, you can do better. Anyway, and the seats, I will say, they are a little firm. I wish they were a little bit softer, a little bit more gushier, I guess, but they, they are a little firm, but I do appreciate that they're air-conditioned seats, especially for black leather. Awesome. I'm going to go into the driving portion. Appreciate you guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and let's go into the driving portion. I'll tell you a little bit more about how this thing drives on the road, especially with that twin turbo inline six. All right, JMC 6000 here behind the wheel of the 2024 Jeep Wagoneer. Or maybe I should just call it the Wagoneer. I, I don't know. Anyway, the, the name and structure is confusing, but that we're not, that's not what this portion of the video is all about. What this portion of the video is all about is behind the wheel impressions as I go up my uh, well-known hill here out in northern Washington, going up this incline, and I just want to see how the twin turbo uh, inline six, I wanted to say V6, but inline six performs. And right now, get this cruise control set to 55 miles an hour, just downshifted, but it's still under two grand. It's in seventh gear. It's about ready to plateau, and then I'll start to climb up again. A couple things to note about this powertrain. Again, like I said before in my review, it is buttery smooth. Whether you're at idle, whether it's going up to redline, it doesn't matter. The thing being an inline six, it's buttery smooth. There's not much sound to it. It kind of, it, it's kind of like a, oh, just downshifted in seventh gear again. Um, starting to go up this hill. Not much sound to it. Um, the only reason I could tell it downshifted is you feel a little bit of a jolt of the downshift. Again, this, this transmission is smooth as well. Now it's starting to go up this hill. Uh, gas mileage is very much unremarkable. And this thing going up this hill, this thing is averaging right now. Uh, current gas mileage going up this hill is 8 miles a gallon. So <laughs> it's a pretty thirsty th I think it's just as thirsty as the Hemi, to be honest with you. So, but I know this does do less emissions than the Hemi. Anyway, a couple things of how the Jeep Wagoneer drives down. The Wagoneer is based off the full-size Ram truck platform. So it's very much a full-size SUV, body on frame, nothing uh, really fancy there. It does have coil spinks in the back, independent front suspension up front. Um, and it rides like a big SUV. Um, it almost has like a, a very pillowy cushiony ride at times the it can get a little jarring under some joshulations in the road but unjoshulations in the road but for the most part it's a very smooth very pillowy very bouncy kind of comfy ride uh, you definitely don't want to take corners in this thing you definitely don't want to carve canyons in this thing but um it does okay i will say this when you get on the power it, it feels like this thing, you're in a roller coaster. It's going to take you for a ride when you get on the power. Um, right now, flattened out over that hill, pretty much uneventful. Um, it's in eighth gear right now, cruising just under 1,500 RPMs uh, at 55 miles an hour. So, I have to say, again, the biggest downside and disappointment has to be that it does not have, it doesn't have adaptive cruise. And there's not much I can do with the gauge cluster. I mean, the, the gauge cluster pretty much, I have a few screens to choose from. You can see my average miles per gallon right now. Um, I can do a couple things, but there's not much I can do. I mean, it's not very configurable. Um, you got several things you can kind of configure, but 
Again, this is the behind the wheel version of view. I love the way Android Auto looks. Uh, nice and clear, nice and clean on the screen. Very nice. All right, well, this is my overall review. What do I think? I think in the Wagoneer, there's some better options out there. If you want to go, if you want to go with something this big, I, I think you would do well with maybe a, a limited expedition, maybe a, a kind of a premium Tahoe with the three liter Duramax. That's always an option if you're looking for gas mileage or fuel mileage rather. Um, but there's some better options out there for the money, I believe. So anyway, you guys be blessed. Have a wonderful day. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I upload every single Wednesday morning and every single Saturday. You guys be blessed and we'll catch you on the next one. Awesome.